All right. My name is Nicholas Zomquist. I'm not really supposed to be here. It's supposed to be Pranathi, my student, giving this talk. But she had these issues. So you, instead, you get me. This work is done with uh, a former student of Maya Dil Yeltsin, as well as a colleague at SAS Institute, San Greg. <clears throat> and to give you some background of what we're looking at, there are many examples of ordered or sorted lists where you have items and values. So think of, for example, the, uh, the ranking of happiness for different countries in the world, the scores of your favorite teams in a league, maybe the cost for tuition at universities and so on. So ordered lists are common. And a common way to visualize these, if we take an example of countries, is just a, a scrolled bar chart. Right, so you have items and you have the bars, the width of the horizontal bars here showing values. Of course, with a, a representation like this, if I have a longer list than fits the screen, I'll have to scroll. That's the part of the, of the, the word. But um, so we call these uh, ranked lists in this paper, essentially sequence of items where we have associated data values. So this is clearly a prevalent type of data that shows up and the representations we're talking about often are part of our visualization dashboards. But we can do better than scrolled bar charts. Of course, I mentioned, if you have a long list, you're going to have to do scrolling. And scrolling takes time. You'd have to do interaction, and that will take time. So in recent years, a couple of authors and designers, practitioners, have proposed alternative visualizations that try to use the space more efficiently. So let me swap over and show you a few of these. This tool is the t called Shubok that my student uh, Adil, and there's a link at the end of the presentation too to this. It's just a web-based library for visualizing these things. So here's a scrolled bar chart of fictional data. So the data doesn't mean anything. So Belgium at the top. And if I scroll down to see the whole list, I think this is something like 150 items. I would clearly have to scroll to see the whole thing. A common way to visualize this, maybe just because it's one of the, those defaults in Tableau, is tree maps. Tree maps, if you know something about them, were designed really for visualizing hierarchies, so trees. And a, a list like this is certainly not a hierarchy, it's a flat list. But it turns out they can, it often happens in practice. Either this or something like it, like a bubble chart, where you have the area of a visual mark showing the size of the value. And as a visualization designer, this always used to make me cringe a bit because we know from experience in graphical perception that assessing length as length of a bar is more accurate than assessing area. So that was one of the starting points and motivations for doing this, to explore this, this phenomenon that we see that a lot of designers and practitioners use. A couple of years ago, Stephen Few, who's a visualization practitioner, proposed a technique that he called wrap bars. So this is a wrap bar. The idea is that you use the horizontal space of the chart more efficiently so that you can eliminate scrolling and instead you introduce these columns. So in this case we have, what is it, five columns that uh, each show the bigger values from left to right. But of course, so the, that means you can see everything on the screen at one point. You don't have to scroll. The downside is that you lose some resolution now because each of these columns get less uh, horizontal space to fit in. So minute differences between in individual countries here might not be as obvious as they were in the other re representation. So a couple of years ago, uh, my student Adil, who I mentioned, one of the co-authors of this work, he proposed a technique that he called piled bars that was inspired by this. But instead of using, well, we still segment the bar into pieces, but instead of using columns, we use the same baseline. So you see here that this, the bars now get stacked on top of each other or piled on top of each other. So they all have the same baseline. So Belgium, uh, see if I can find my cursor. Belgium still, goes, Belgium still goes from the common origin all the way to the right here. But the smaller values are going are gonna to be overlapping on top. So there's a bit of a wrapping here too where the, where the segmentation, segmentation begins. And we use color gradients and shadows to, to make that more clear. But Obviously, this is a representation that's less familiar than scrolled bar chart and even wrapped bar charts. So uh, another addition to this pantheon of ranked list visualizations from recent years is a 
tool, uh, visualization called Swinka Plots that Stephen Few, independently working with a designer called Daniel Swinka, proposed. And you see that the representation is very similar to our piled bars, but instead of using bars, we use dots, a little like Mike was mentioning in the questions of the previous talk here. So the dots now show the top values, so they don't show the entire bar, which means you don't have overlap, you don't have overplotting to the same degree. And then 2017, Sun, who's one of our co-authors, proposed a poster at Infoviz uh, that he called packed bars. And the idea here is a little different. We still use horizontal space so that we can squeeze all the items on the screen at the same time. But they use a rectangle packing where only the biggest items are shown with a common origin. Those are the blue ones. And then additional items are, are packed in, in a greeting algorithm so where they fit. All right, so those are six representations. And as any visualization researcher worth their salt would say, which one is the best one? That was the starting point for this project. So to answer that question, we ran a crowdsourced graphical perception study where we wanted to compare accuracy and completion time for these six techniques for three different representative tasks. And I'll talk about the tasks in a moment. And of course, the size of these lists that we're visualizing may also have an impact. So we looked at three different data sizes, 75, 150, and 300 items. And I'm going to mention that at the end as a limitation. These are not huge lists. So at the same time, you know, typical dashboards don't have lists of thousands or hundreds of thousands of items for the type of categorical data we're dealing with. But still, this is this are still a uh, small list, so, so we're not, I'm not going to try to argue that this is a, a big data set by any means. Every participant saw 10 repetitions, and you'll note here the BP means between participants and WP means with, within participants. Because these were crowdsourced studies, we can only keep crowd workers for a limited amount of time, and we didn't want to train them on more than one technique and one task at any point in time. So every person saw 10 repetitions of one visualization for one task. So we planned to have 10 participants for each combination of technique and task because of some software concerns when we ran the study, some logging concerns, we ended up with 222 participants and 6,684 trials. So I, what about the tasks? Well, we wanted a good spread of tasks that capture the type of things you might do with a ranked list visualization like this one. So the first task is a one item type of task that deals with a single item. So we call it a rank task. Basically, the, the goal, you see the interface here that people would see through their web browsers, of marking an item and then telling, asking the participant to, to rank, you know, what order what, out of one to 75 items is this particular item. So that was one item. The other one was on two items. So in this case, comparison. So given two items that are marked using a, a circle and a star, signify which one is smaller, and then estimate the size of, of the, the, the smaller one to the bigger one. And then after a cardinality of one, two, the third one was more of an overview task that involved all of the items. The goal here was to characterize the distribution by assessing the average of all the, all the data that's in, in the view. All right, so we ran our study. Uh, and it's worth noting first, perhaps, that uh, we have looked at this problem before. In 2016, we started a study like this that we published in its graphics interface in 2017 uh, with Adil, my student at the time, he was finishing his PhD, and Ben Peterson, my colleague. But in that study, we had a smaller set of techniques to look at. We looked at tree maps, we looked at wrapped bars, and scrolled bars. So the addition in this new work is the three additional visualizations. And we also weren't satisfied with the overview task there. In that one, it was supposed to, you were supposed to characterize the distribution. So you had to give one of three options, either saying that the distribution of data points is more or less uniform, or if it's skewed to low values or high values. So that was a pretty rough type of, of uh, task. You just could just give one of three values. And it felt like a lot of that could be 
just clicked through by, by a crowd worker rather than actually estimating averages. Anyway, so here's the results. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. You can take a look at the paper for those. These are confidence intervals, 95% ones, for broken down by the task. Those are the three columns. And then you see technique per data size. So let me just give you a summary. We found in general that wrap bars had sort of the best overall error performance. This is error, so how far you off you were from the correct answer had the best overall performance, even if scrawled bars was probably the most accurate one. Swinka plots did pretty poorly, except for the mean task, assessing the mean of the data set. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Tree maps did surprisingly well. And again, this is, goes against some of the, some of the uh, wisdom of the field, knowing that area is harder to assess than length. We were a little surprised. Here's the completion time data. Again, give me, I'll give you the highlights. Not surprisingly, scrolling bars were the slowest in all the examples, basically. And that's because there's interaction involved. You have to scroll up and down to see all the data values. The mean task was the most uh, time-consuming one, trying to assess the entire data set. It's not su so too surprising that that takes time. Again, um, um, and, and yeah, so, so these are all more or less expected findings. So what does this all mean? Summarizing our implications, not surprisingly, as I already said, scroll bar charts were accurate, perhaps because they're familiar, but they were also slow. Tree maps surprised us by not being the slowest and not being the most ac least accurate one. It actually was pretty good all around although rat bars sort of outperformed the others in terms of all-round performance. So it's pr probably the visualization I should suggest. It has a good mix of familiarity as well as uh, performance. The Swinka plots I mentioned did particularly well for the mean task, which is assessing an entire, uh, an entire data set. And that is perhaps because it really becomes more of a scatter plot. You're trying to find a centroid of the points rather than bars, so that gets harder, whereas the, the centroid of the points, it's, it's an easier task, perhaps. Limitations, we have a few. Um, I mentioned already scale. We are not looking at big data sets. These are small things that we typically see in dashboards, but certainly something to look at in the future. And Daniel Svinka, who's the designer of the Svinka plots, we've been in touch with him. He's a little disappointed that we didn't look at very large uh, visualizations. And it also could be argued that perhaps tree maps would do better if you have very large, large data sets because you're doing a space filling representation that efficiently uses all of the available space. We also did low level tasks, perhaps not uh, those that you might, you know, that we, we think that they are building blocks to higher level tasks, but we haven't tested that. And also in talking to Stephen Few, he was disappointed that we didn't involve data visualization experts and just crowd, uh, crowd workers. And perhaps some of these representations would have different performance if the people that, that were using them were, were actual experts. All right, so that sort of concludes what I'm going to say. I just want to finish with this slide. In the background, you see a chart from William Playfair's Political Atlas. And it's worth noting that William Playfair was a Scottish engineer. And he was also the inventor of the bar charts and a few other visual representations. And here's also the links to. Uh, the website with that tool I showed you, as well as the experimental data. Thank you, and I'm happy to take your questions. Again, we have the uh, microphones in the corners. Do you have a question, Michael? Yeah. Um, so with, with the piled bars, with that, that gradient effect, um, I wonder if participants um, ever sort of made, you know, made the wrong impression and assumed the start of the gradient was the start of the baseline. Mm -hmm. um, was that something that you could detect in your experimental results? And if so, how often did that happen? So in the experiment, there was no interaction. So you couldn't, what I can do now is I can highlight so I see the whole thing. Uh, no, I, we didn't look for that effect. Uh, I'm not, maybe you have an idea how to do it. We didn't think about looking at it. But it is, it is something we heard from a lot of the people uh, that, you know, informally looked at the representation. It's not, it's not trivial. 
uh, how it works if you have no interaction. And it's easy to think that these are stacked, so one bar is stacked on top of the other, and then you obviously would have that concern. So we thought we were ingenious when we came up with this representation, but it turned out that it wasn't as, you know, you need to be familiar with it. But it didn't do so bad, so. Yeah. More questions? Hi, thank you for the nice talk. I was wondering while you were talking, um, the table lens representation sort of squishes everything together, so you always see the entire, you don't have to scroll. Would that make any difference? Would, you, would that be an interesting thing to test? Yes, I, I think that's a good point. So we, we set up a few requirements when, when we set the parameters for this study, and one was that you would be able to identify each item so that, that you know, you'd, you'd have to make sure that these, these bars are big enough. And I was, you know, in the table lens, they become minute little lines. Right, so, but you have like focus areas and you mouse yeah, over it. Yeah, right. So that, so I agree. That's one. The other thing was no interaction in our, in our limitations. We wanted to sort of, except for the scrolling, um, uh, we wanted to limit that part. But I, I think that's a good point. Uh, if you have, if you can compress, if you can do fisheye things, you can, you can, you can have different performance, certainly. And if you could uh, remember to say your name and affiliation when you ask the question, please. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I want to know... Could you, you could you state your name, please? Oh, oh, sorry. My name is Meng Xia, and I come from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And I'm wondering uh, whether you have different... Uh, when you're considering the tasks, so have you considered peop why people use the rank list? Maybe different people, they, use, uh, they want to show different things by the ranking list. And the, the, in different conditions, maybe some other things are considered, for example, the space. You, you have different representation of the rank list, mm -hmm. but the space, uh, the, some, uh, some users, they want to show their, they want to highlight their ranking. And they have different requirements for the ranking list. Do you ever surveyed or considered about that things? So short answer is no, and the slightly longer one is that that's absolutely true. And as I said in my limitations, we wanted to focus on very low-level tasks that we think are building blocks to higher-level ones. But yes, the next step would be to look at uh, you know more rich tasks than the, than the ones that we did. So you might see things like that you highlight there certainly. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, it occurred to me looking at the tree map visualization that the particular layout algorithm you chose um, has some impact on this, especially making it such that, at least on the far left, there's like an obvious ordering for the ranking and maybe it breaks down a little Absolutely, bit on the right-hand yeah. side. Is it, so is there maybe another algorithm that would make this even better? Yeah, we talk about it briefly in the paper, and it's also interesting. I didn't note it in the presentation. That's one place where our new study differed from our old study. So we showed that tree maps were not as bad as we thought. In the old study, we, they got poorer results, and that is because we used a different layout algorithm. So this is a squarified tree map layout algorithm. And as you note, it, it, there is a deterministic sum. You know, you, can, you know, you get an ordering from area large to small. So uh, that will have an effect, and, and it would be interesting to see if there are other layout algorithms that would make it even more clear. Cool. Uh, so we have time for one more question while the speakers switch. So looking at the tree map, sorry, hi, I'm Mike Van Wordheisen, I'm with Microsoft. Looking at your tree map, it seems like the data is fairly uh, closely in the same neighborhood, like rough magnitude, but if you had a different kind of uh, disparity in data, like maybe more logarithmic scale, how do you think that might affect your results? Yeah, so if you take a look at the website, there's an option so you can change and skew data, and I've been unplugged, so I can't show you, but uh, I think um, the problem with tree maps is that the items get small, the labels disappear, so that we, were, we wanted to avoid that in our study, uh, because then you couldn't read the items. So we, didn't, we only looked at uniform distributions where you have that effect, as you, as you know. Um, I think tree maps are going to do better for that type of situation. That would be my, my gut feeling. Great. Thanks again.